Hello one and all and welcome to Behind the Glass, the podcast which aims to take you behind the scenes of the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass as well as the automotive and social media worlds. I'm your host Sam from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. Alongside me as always Mr. Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. This week we have a guest in Paul Wallace from Supercars of London. Now press that button. There we go. <laughs> I think ever since season three started, but maybe even way back from season one, you've been begging to come on the podcast at the same time as Tony so that you can ruin him. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to enjoy this one more than anyone I've ever, ever done. I'm going to be very sensible today. Okay. Uh, he's bottled it. <laughs> he's bottled- <laughs> You have come dressed as a supply teacher, though. Uh, yeah. Okay, you've guys. come dressed as a chef. Hold on a sec. <laughs> Let's not go off the rails too soon. Um, anyway, welcome. If you are joining us on YouTube, uh, please make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications. Tony, what's the number we're trying to get to? 50,000. 50,000 subscribers. That is the aim. That is the game. Once we get there, one of you will be joining us or, for an episode of Behind the Glass. Ooh, that's Ooh, cool. Hello. Um, and if you're listening to us, please make sure to keep following us in whatever platform you're listening to us on and reviews and oh there he is he's on form today someone's had his coffee uh yes reviews that's what we want we want your five star reviews pressures on people um but if you don't like us feel free to let us know as well we we appreciate the feedback probably the Uh, more reviews the better right that's exactly it we're just going for 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 volume (laughs) not (laughs) not quality (laughs) quantity quantity (laughs) quality. Um, just just get those reviews in anyway um now we've got the housekeeping out the way uh today Today is our Geneva Motor Show special. Mm. Slight issue with that. It didn't happen. There wasn't a Geneva (laughs) Motor Show. (laughs) Um, uh, In case you missed the big news, uh, this year's Geneva Motor Show was cancelled due to hashtag coronavirus. COVID. 20 or whatever COVID-19. Come on, man. We're in 2020, so. Yeah, but it started in 19. Oh. Got it. He's all, over, <laughs> he's, all, he's all over the shop. Um, but what it did is it led to manufacturers launching cars in a sort of unique way, uh, basically turning to the internet. And I was quite vocal about this on my stories. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, we're going to get into it. Because um, for me, really, it seems like the manufacturers just turned to Shmi and JWW. <laughs> I feel like that was the strategy this year. How are we going to launch cars? I know what. We'll get Shmi and JWW along to film the Let's cars. be honest, though. Those two were the king of Geneva Motor Shows. Shmi is a machine during that show. Show. And they are and the most two professional ones as well. Yeah. <laughs> the most presentable. I'd like I'd to agree. Say. The most knowledgeable, the most presentable. I haven't shaved since January. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone you two was look like be... you just got out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> if I was put in I front have. of a Koenigsegg Jumeirah, or if that's even what it's called, I wouldn't know what to say. No. I'd just be like, Oh, what's a cut? What, what is that? Oh, we're going to get onto it, Tony. Just oh, okay, you it's coming, is it? Um, quite excitingly for you viewers and listeners, uh, before we started recording, I did say to Tony and Paul, like, do you know, like, are you aware of all the cars that came out this week? Both of them went, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be a journey of discovery. I have luckily made notes. I've come prepared for the first time ever to a recording of Behind the Glass. Uh, to give you all a preview, the cars that we're going to be discussing in today's episode, uh, the Alpha Julia GTA, the BAC Mono S, the Bentley Bacalava or Bacala, whatever it's called, Bugatti Chiron Pure Sport, the Koenigsegg Gamera, the McLaren 765LT, the Morgan Plus, for the Porsche 911 Turbo and the Golf GTI. Oh, well, then, well, we've got one, at least one really good one, the Golf GTI. <laughs> <talking about. laughs> Tony's favourite. Uh, of course, there have been tons of other cars launched over the last week, but uh, none of them really interested us, so we're going to get into it anyway. So, yes, welcome to our Geneva Motor Show special with Paul Wallace from Supercars of London. Uh, we'll be right back with you in two seconds to break down the cars that were launched this week. Let's kick things off with a car that I'm going to be quite vocal about. And I sound like you. Well, I think in the wrong way as well. I think people are going to expect me to say one thing. I'm going to say the other because we're going to start with the Alpha Julia GTA M. Floor's yours, boy. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, I just think it's ridiculous. I guess. Comes from a man that was bought into a four C. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is. I mean, you know, everyone says, oh, "Alfa Romeo, you're your, your master, love it. He's the best car brand in the world." This car really pisses me off. Now, <laughs> whoa! I, I frustratingly still love the Jaguar XC Project Eight, which is effectively the exact same car, but with a with a Jaguar badge instead of an Alfa badge. But what annoys me about this Julia GTA thing is that the Julia was a fantastic car really good looking car and a car that didn't really need messing around with I don't think it you know needed more power it didn't need much and what they've done is they've gone oh let's make it 100 kilograms lighter put a roll cage in the back so it's no longer a four seater put a really Halfords looking wing on it and then claim that Sauber Formula 1 team were involved in the development something they shouldn't really be celebrating I mean let's face it (laughs) Sauber didn't exactly have a good year last year it's not like going oh my god the Williams developed this car like I don't want that I didn't sing it do that Oh yeah, Singer did. No, that's Williams Advanced Technology, <laughs> which I think arguably are a better <laughs> yeah, company yeah, yeah. than the actual Formula One team. <laughs> but yes, come on, share your thoughts when you saw this car because this was the first car that kind of got launched this week. Mm. Um, Tony, I'll, I'll kickstart things with you. What were your thoughts on the GTA and GTA M? Well, I think you've been a bit hypocritical, really, because you just bang, you just bungled on about that car, the XE Project A. No. Oh, sorry. The Alpha. The Alpha. Right. About how bad it is. Yeah. I thought you was describing the Project 8. I mean, they're the same <laughs> car. <laughs> One's he did got say a... that they're the same car. Yeah, but but he loves the Project 8. And he don't... I mean, they're the same. One's got an Alpha badge and one's got a Jag badge. But the Alpha one doesn't look good. And the Julie... Like, the... XE Project A is a better looking XE in my opinion. It's a beefier, meaner, correct. aggressive looking XE. Whilst the Julia GTA, I think, is a worse looking, chaved up, to f- coin your phrase, um, a version of the Julia. Everyone wanted the GTA to be a two door coupe. That's what we were all hoping for. Yeah, no? we were actually. You're right. Yeah. yeah and yeah. instead they've gone, no, we bring back this really iconic name, this moniker, and just, it's just the Halford spec. That's what they should have called it. The Julia Halfords. I don't think like, they have Halfords in Italy. No, and actually for any non-UK uh, <laughs> listeners or viewers, <laughs> Halfords is, how would we describe it? It's an auto shop where Paul takes a his bun- car. <laughs> <laughs> it's an auto shop where you can go to buy basically anything for your car. Fundamentally very useful, but the modification segment is questionable. It's questionable in yeah. the sense that usually it's quite low priced. And so the range is also not the best looking. And yeah, so anyway, I think you've all got the idea. <laughs> <laughs> but Paul, come on. I know you're a big fan of the Alfa Romeo <laughs> brand and cars. What were your thoughts on the GTA? It sounded like Alfa were flapping because they were like, oh, we have nothing to show for ourselves this year. The same with Maserati every single year. And Thank you. actually... <laughs> I think Sorry, like, I got a bit butt hurt there. But. The Julia QV, we did a video on it. We did. Love that car. Brilliant car. Now starting to see it creep, creep down to like 35, 40 grand. It's like, this is seriously cool. It's M3 comp money. Yeah. When I saw this GTA thing, firstly, all I could think of was like, oh, is Grand Theft Auto 6 out? Like, <laughs> <laughs> all exciting. And then when I realized that it had this like sort of weird wing on the back, like it confused the hell out of me. I haven't done a lot of research like you have, um, but it just sounded like Alfa Romeo were really panicking that they couldn't bring anything to the biggest motor show platform in the world. And they bought that. Yeah, I mean, as I say, let's not. Uh, there are two versions. There's the GTA and there's the GTA M. So think of that for Project Eight fans as the Project Eight or the Project Eight Touring, um, because Didn't the GTA even know existed. <laughs> yes. No, I don't. I mean, you've lost me. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I went to uh, Jaguar there. Um, the GTA basically is a slightly dulled down version. It hasn't got the wing, hasn't got the roll cage, so it's slow. Oh, that's supposed the one I buy then. Yeah, it's still got four seats. It's not quite as um, yeah in your face. But fundamentally, I just it's the bit that annoys me is the GTA. A moniker. It's like if Ferrari put the GTO on a Bath 595. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, like it's that's not... That low. Yeah, because GTA is like, cool, that's supposed to be reserved for really like iconic, amazing, and I think coupe alphas. Ferrari done that, mate, with the 599 put GTO. I mean, should they have done that's, that? Mm, really? Tough, but when else were they going to do it? And it's still a great car, that 599 GTO. And like, how can you... Like, I think, when do I you think say, the GTO is more iconic than the TDF. Agreed. Yeah. And maybe long term, it'll be it'll be better in terms of value as well. Mm. Because, because the you 599 know, was a worse car than the F12. 100%. Yeah. Uh, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, but at the time, the 599 was a, was a thing. Um, GTO, obviously, a lot has been made out of that moniker over the years. It's like obviously one of the most iconic car 
uh, uh, letters. But kind of accidental. Yeah. Like, they weren't expecting the GTO when they go, hey, let's call this one the GTO, for it to completely blow up and have this cult craze behind it. They had to use it again at some point. Um, so I, I don't knock them entirely for that. And now... They've not done it again yet. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, Ferrari, please don't just ruin yourselves further. <laughs> they'll, they'll SUV <laughs> GTO. <Yeah. laughs> but you know, this really is what I was thinking. I was like, please don't let it be the pure Sang GTO. Um, given the way that they're going at the moment, it could be that. Um, but yeah, so, th- so it's more the badge that upsets me and the fact that they've messed up, I think, the styling of the Julia more than actually the concept. Because yes, obviously I do like the theoretical idea of a stupidly impractical, loud and fast salute. But you know, that's classical Italian companies though, mate. I mean, they literally just make it up as they go along. They really I mean, they do. do- no, they, they do that when they build their cars. Like, they forget to put parts on and go, oh, dear. Instead of... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was an Indian... Yeah, that was, that was an say, Indian yeah. mechanic. <laughs> Who's working in the Lamborghini factory? Well, it's because factory. they just constantly no. drink red wine, don't they? Look, <laughs> look at my martial arts. Or sleep. I think they forget that they're, to put seatbelts in. They're like, oh, like, when we put seatbelts in, there's no room that side, or we'll just put them through the middle. So I've got to go that side for the seatbelt. And then the reverse is like just a random button down there. I'm like... Oh. You're right, they forget. Yeah. They go, the car is beautiful. It sounds amazing. How you get in it oh we need doors <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, anyway. Paul addressed that problem with his car his one ain't got doors <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're not aware saving. Paul's Mercy Lago recently been resprayed <laughs> and is in bits oh I think now it's no longer yeah. in bits <laughs> it's rebuilt it, it has been in bits for a long time <laughs> yeah. at uh, Barkways is that where it's been? Uh, it been SB Race Engineering SB Race Engineering so yeah Tony is uh, 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 fond of mobbing up <laughs> Paul for the fact that his very expensive Lamborghini is in pieces um, but yeah okay well we'll move on I'll hold judgment until I drive one. I'm sure it'll be fantastic because I did love the Julia as we've all just agreed. It's we an amazing like Julia, car. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And they they theoretically made it better because it's lighter and a little bit more track focused. So yeah, anyway, moving on from the Alpha to a car that I don't think we're going to talk about for very long. Uh, it's the BAC Mono S. Right. Okay. Oh, no, take a, take a guess what they've done to it. Because visually it looks identical. So take a guess. What is the, What have they done to the Mono? Put, put an S on it. Like, at least you just wrote no. this as the same. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Almost. Okay. I didn't, they, didn't they change... There's, like, new headlights on it or new lights on the front end. It's a bit more than that. There is there is a performance upgrade. By how much? Pass. Okay, so the, let me tell you the disappointing part and then the interesting part. <laughs> 25 more horsepower. Okay. Turbocharged now. They got 25 horsepower. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm a turbo. 30% more torque. Okay. I mean... It was much faster than... Yeah. I, I, I think they had a few monos lying around and went, yeah. what do we do with I these? mean, they're better off just telling the driver to lose weight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. But the BAC mono is a wicked car. I yeah. love it that It is a wicked thing. car. I drove it once in a monsoon and I was like, it's the coolest yeah. thing ever. I mean, <laughs> like, oh, ultimate toy. Yeah. Have you ever driven one, Tony? I've never driven one, but... But a couple have come spanking past me before on track. <laughs> yeah. They're so yeah. fast. So I think you'd love it, mate. Yeah. I think oh, you would yeah. love it. Yeah. Your new obsession with track days, I think you'd be all over that. Cops flat in one of them, do you think? I've, I've a Silverstone's all flat. I've seen yes, it before. What he said. <laughs> Paul doesn't know where the brake pedal is when he's on track. <laughs> <laughs> We've all witnessed that. <laughs> um, okay, well, look, yeah, BAC Mono S, that was the news from them. Uh, not, not a lot to, 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 to talk about. So we're going to move on to my current brand of... Favor? No, my favourite brand of the moment. It's the Bentley Bacalava. Oh, that's that convertible thing that's 1.4, five, four, five, five four. million. Actually a Barchetta, permanently convertible. It's not got a even, convertible roof. Even it's, more useless. Yeah, they're making 12 of them. <laughs> it, for what? LA. Yeah, and it's actually not called, <laughs> it's actually not called the Bacalava, but I just like calling it that. It's called the Bacalar. Um, and yes, fundamentally, absolutely pointless. But I know why they built this. Go on. So is this a customer commissioned? No, because so, it is a limited n- number of cars. Like it's, they're building twelve of them, which are probably all sold. I don't really know. Um, when I was in New York last year in Bentley, sorry if you're going to absolutely kill me for saying this. Um, I went <laughs> to an know. event with the EXP 100 GT, which was that amazing concept concept car yeah. they launched for their 100th anniversary. Actually, legit, super cool. Everyone fell in love with it. The internet fell in love with it. Um, and whilst I was there, I bumped into the designers, and I was just chatting to them casually, which is why Bentley might come after me for talking. <laughs> 
about this. But this is a confidential they, chat. They admitted um, that they, they gen- received genuine interest from people trying to buy that concept. Like people were genuinely going nuts, going like, I want that car, how do I get it? And they never really thought that that would be the case. So I reckon that they said, okay, how can we build another car that's not this EXP 100 GT because there's just no way to actually make that for customers, but we'll take a lot of the elements. And that's what they have done. A lot of the elements on this Bacalava, um, Bacala, uh, are from the EXP 100 GT. Um, Is it still a Bentley Continental GTC? No. So Good. there's only two body parts that are the same, the door handles and... No, but the platform. Oh yeah, the platform, of course. So they're charging 1.5 million for a GTC. It's like that Rolls Royce with the custom body. Yeah, that was like ten million quid. Yeah, yeah. So it's the it's the body work, which is what they're charging a lot, and the materials. And do they class as as genuine interest twelve people? Because how many cars they built? I'm assuming that yeah. was the twelve people that said I want to buy an EXP 100 GT, and they went. <laughs> yeah. oh, but so how old I... were they? Twelve. <laughs> Let me ask you. <laughs> it was in their comments on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they've done it. I mean, I. Of all the things that I wanted Bentley to launch, it wasn't a Bacalava, I can yeah, be honest. Yeah, bizarre. Like, bizarre. And but... it's not even hybrid? No. It's not even electric? No. So it's... W12. That's <laughs> a W12. I mean, I probably should, should, we, should we check that really quickly? Where should I mean, we? Will be a but w- the, concept, yeah. the concept is like, it's all about... Oh yeah, completely... future car. It's yeah. electric. Yeah. So it seems bizarre for them to just go, oh, let's just shove the same engine in that we put in all of our cars that's not even that special. Because you can buy a Bentley Continental GT for like 16 grand now. So it's all about, you know, celebrating the sort of handmade sort of nature. Um, but all of their cars are handmade. It's the, it's the, <laughs> the crew. It's, it's a return to, to bespoke coach building. That's what they're all about. Okay. Um, I'm really struggling to find any information on it, but bear with me. So is this the, the Bentley Eagle Speedster then? The Bentley mm, Eagle. In a no, way. no. Because no. Eagle is obviously... This is, you know, built in-house, you know, with the Mulliner team. And I think it's just supposed to show off what they can do. But but as I say, my belief is that it is just to answer those questions they had from people saying, I want to buy an EXP 100 GT. Mm. Um, anyway, unfortunately, I'm, I'm now struggling to find this information and <laughs> to not make this <laughs> a super, super awkward <laughs> segment. Uh, let's move on. Anyway, there we go. None of us are going to be buying the back of last, So uh, good luck to those people <laughs> yeah. who are. Um, let's move on to another car that none of us are going to be buying. Uh, the Bugatti Chiron. Perth Sport. Now this is out of order. This car. Oh bloody hell! Whoa. Here he is. Whoa! Well, no, on, because I was talking to a couple of friends of mine today, and if you've just spent two hundred, no, no, sorry, two million quid, <laughs> two hundred, yeah, two hundred million, two million quid on a car, and they build another one six minutes later with a little bit more power. But you do realise that's Bugatti's business model and has been. F- since the Veyron. Yeah, but... but, but <laughs> How bit... many special editions of the Veyron did they do? I oh, know, but Terrifying. give them a bit more yeah. time though, mate. I mean, that the Chiron's just out. Yeah, so they had like, what, a two, three year waiting list on the Chiron, and then two years in, they dropped the Chiron Sport that was like five kilograms lighter. Mm-hmm. So all of the rich people are going, man, I need that car now. So they're going to order that. Then they go, oh, here's the Super Sport. Then they do this special edition. In about a year and a half, they'll do like a convertible version of it. Crap. Just so that they yeah, can continue so that rich to, people yeah. keep buying cars. Yeah, I mean, this one theoretically is this is the Bugatti for the driver rather than the cruiser because, <laughs> as we both know, having been Chiron drivers oh, over oh, here. No, 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 I didn't drive it. Sadly, oh, didn't you? No, sadly. Oh. Well, speaking as the only person who is doing it, it is still effectively a very, very fast. Uh, Bentley. That is um, massively underselling it. It is underselling it. And actually, <laughs> I, I drove the Chiron Sport, which is arguably a bit more taut and aggressive. This one looks super cool. So this is supposed to be the driver's car. So it's 50 kilograms lighter, 50 kilograms more downforce, a million euros more <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a 3D printed titanium exhaust. And so lots of details which, you know, aren't like, it's just a Chiron with a wing. It's got this big fixed wing at the back. And it's supposed to be able to go around corners and sideways. Apparently it's got a variable drift mode. I mean, would you ever stick that mode on in a three million quid car? That goes no. 200 and whatever miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. I mean, would name me a Bugatti customer that wants to do that. No, there isn't one. Carl Hartley. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Fair. He's banned. Fair. 
<laughs> but do you know what I mean? I, I feel like somebody's gone somewhere like, oh, you know, Bugattis are great, but they don't really go around corners and someone's gone, hey, don't take this insult. And Have you seen this? their testing procedure? You know, all Chirons are delivered with like 450 miles. Are really? they? Yeah. All brand new Chirons arrive at the customer with 450 miles on. Wow, I'd be fuming. Me yeah. too. Just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they go through insane testing. Do so they? Yeah. You can I'm pretty sure they test corners. Yeah. I'd love it if that's wrong and somebody's putting delivery mileage cars up. <laughs> <laughs> 400 miles. It's delivery mileage, mate. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we're going to see them. They're going to be cool. Would you have this or would you have a Devo? Because how much was the Devo? Five mil? Oh, I'd have this. I think this looks better than the Devo. Tony, do you know what the Devo is? It's the it's the Navalary one, isn't it? Yeah, the one with the that looks very different. Yeah, yeah. I'm not interested in either of me. Okay. Not not. Have you, have you driven a Veyron? Have you driven a Veyron? Don't get him started. I've been in a ones. been in a Veyron. Okay. Not driven one. Been in one. Did you like it? Well, it's just like fast and straight line, and I'm not interested, mate. But did you like sitting in it? Not really. Oh. <laughs> I God. mean, and when you oh get... God, I hate you so <laughs> much. No, no, because I mean, when you get just... in a Veyron now, it's like, it's like you got in a car from 1990s. No, it's, no, it's still, still it's banging. It's iconic. It's still banging. It's Concord. No. It's Concord. There you go. Concord for the road. Materials are great. Design is simplistic, but, but elegant. There's no sat-nav, mate. mate. Google Maps in mate, between your legs. Sort your life you can't, out. You're not allowed to do that. Not what? all cars can be Golf you got, GTIs. You've got, <laughs> <laughs> you got to put your phone in the glove box now. No, you don't. Yeah, sure. You do. do, mate. You do. Really? Are you not putting your phone in the glove box? No. Sort your life out. Well, he, well you, it gets away with it. My car doesn't even have a glove box. <laughs> <laughs> it did before you took it apart. <laughs> um, okay, well, I don't really know. I feel like we need to talk about something that's going to be appropriate, but we're not because we're now going to move on to Tony's favourite car of the non-Geneva Motor Show, the Koenigsegg. Jamera. Oh, I've ordered one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've ordered one. Two years is coming. Do you know how much I, the deposit is? I, I don't is? know how I'm going to pay for it, but I've ordered one. I'm buying one. Congrats, mate. Yeah. Uh, can't wait for that. To, should we do that? Should we do that? Uh, the big reveal. That's my, That's going to be the title <laughs> of this podcast. <laughs> that's going to be the title of this how podcast. T- how, Tony bo- how Tony bought a Koenigs. How did you? I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> hard work hard work hard mate. work hard grafting uh, well uh, shocking news came through this week that we know someone that did Mr. JWW has ordered one of these brand new four seater uh, 1700 horsepower Koenig's eggs now hyper GT the billionaires that I know of which are very few um, <laughs> went just nuts like for this car yeah <laughs> Did you say just, just my dad? I was just about to say that. Oh, how my dad wishes he was in that realm. He would only be interested if it was a four billion pound Range Rover anyway. Yeah, I was going to say. Is it going to go up, Sam? Should I buy it? Um, <laughs> that is exactly how he talks. Yeah. He's his son. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we are alike, unfortunately. But yes, so, so for some reason... Mm-hmm. These really, really wealthy people seem to think this was the coolest car ever. Like I, the amount of people that I know that I, you know, don't really have a realis- realistic approach on money seem to just love this thing. I looked at it and went, well, what a piece of crap. I mean, like, so we're talking about a two litre, three cylinder engine that puts out 600 horsepower. Okay, impressive. I can't wait. Like, yeah. that's, that's great. Can't wait. <laughs> can't wait for your delivery. Then three electric motors, one on the crankshaft of the engine which puts in some more horsepower, I think 400 on the rear. rear, and then two on the rear axle, leading to that 700. I mean, okay, fine. Nord 60, less than two seconds with your mates in the back. Can no, I, my can daughter. I, yeah. I put my daughter in the back. Sorry, you put your daughter in the back. Okay, Paul, go, go in. Sorry. I'm going to jump in because I was very vocal about this Koenigsegg when I first saw it. I was like, what is the point in this? What is the point in a four-seater car that is this fast? And then there were a lot of messages that I got back saying, what's the point in most hypercars or supercars? And then I kind of got this perspective. I was actually, it's doing something for the sake of it, for the love of it. And Christian von Koenigsegg is all about that. All of his cars is just because he loves cars. So this is kind of a new challenge for him. And I started to gain a different perspective on this car. However, Koenigseggs have always been notorious for being incredibly dangerous, twitchy, very hard to get power down, even though they've broken records and everything. This just gives people the excuse or opportunity to put two more lives in danger, in my words. Like a two-seater car, yeah, 
you when you want to go fast, you kind of go fast and you feel that you're responsible for the person next to you. Having two extra people in the back of the car and then going that fast just feels like you're putting more people in danger. Four wheel drive though. Psst, doesn't matter. Yes, 1700 brake so, horsepower. So he's trying to protect his investment over there. <laughs> and, my, <laughs> and my children. <laughs> and your children. <laughs> yeah. I see what you're saying there. I kind of get the sort of why not question, yeah. like, like thing. Uh, it's because it's, I think, so unrelatable to us. I mean, apart from Tony, but maybe you and I, Paul. It's so, you know, it, 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 we don't connect with it because I'm never going to yeah. look to buy one. I'm never going to be in that position to buy one. No, you can afford one. JWW can, you can, you can have one. No, me and James, unfortunately, very different, uh, different <laughs> leagues. No, of, both in the same job. In both YouTube. No, no. no. Oh, well, I, anyway, let's... I. No. Hey, he's ordered one. I haven't. So uh, he's got a kid. He's got family a, man. He's a family man. He needs the four seats. Um, it all works different. Shmi, look at Shmi's collection. I, I, me and Shmi do the same job. But look at my collection. Yeah, it, <laughs> look at Paul's collection. But, but but Shmi's got a lot more followers than you. He did it a lot longer. Fair. James has got the same amount of followers. Than he's you. got more than me actually. Okay, but, but what? Yeah. Okay. Perhaps no, work that the, a little bit harder, you can have a Koenig's egg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the advice, Tony. Uh, I'll get some tips from you after the show. No, well. you come house with me. Yeah, come on. Go halves with you? Yeah, because we can share you're it? going to have children in a minute as well, so we can share. Oh, God, here he is. Don't, don't, don't get Vicky getting carried away. No, um, let's move on before this gets holidays, awkward. You and Sam in the front and your two kids in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next road trip to Ireland. Yeah. The next road trip to Ireland with our Kernigs and Gamera. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's got lots of neat features on it. My thing with Kernigs is it feels like there's, they always keep bringing out these like mad, insane, ridiculous cars. Where's the Jesco? Like, has that even hit production yet? And suddenly well, there's no. a Gamera. Like, every year. They've just year, launched a new one, haven't they? Yeah, there's a, G- there's a high, low, speed. high speed or high low speed. speed? High speed. High speed running. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, <laughs> that's a, like a slight in joke. An in joke <laughs> to some amazing content on YouTube. But look at Koenigsegg and the. Like, I just feel like technologically they are continually. Uh, flying the flag for the automotive companies, given that they are kind of building cars in a shed. I know that it's not a shed, but you know what yeah. I mean? Like, look at Pagani, for example. Well, They're I was still churning out Saunders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, at least Koenigsegg are going forward. Yeah, <laughs> I think they've kind they put of... put two more seats in. <laughs> they've, they've definitely... Entertainment. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> Wait, hold on. They've definitely... On, on Pagani. Yeah, 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 like they've definitely that on Pagani because uh, yeah, what where are Pagani? What are then? And it has to be applauded for the ingenuity, um, innovation, innovation for sure. I just am a bit like ugh, like deliver a Jesco first, then you know. Well, yeah, I mean they've probably delivered like three Regeras. Yeah, exactly. I mean, why don't they build an SUV? Oh, don't stop. <laughs> cool. well, else is. I mean, they're halfway there with this. That's what I'm Hyper saying. GT. Call it a GTO. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so moving on and away from big, big expensive stuff uh, to something which is still expensive, but maybe a little bit more relevant to us in the room and maybe some of you listening, who knows. Um, Paul, this week you attended the launch of the McLaren 765LT. Tell I us did. more. I think McLaren nailed their last minute change of plans because I think every manufacturer kind of got their back up against the wall. All of their plans completely shifted when Geneva and Switzerland completely stopped all of these crazy events happening. And I feel like McLaren nailed it in comparison to all of the other companies. Like me and Tony sat here, we're on social media every single day and we feel like we've missed a lot of these car launches. McLaren with their live stream was brilliant. They got a lot of press down. They got a lot of employees there and they still did what they were supposed to do in Geneva, just the MTC. And I was speaking to people at McLaren. They said it was so difficult getting the car back because the show got cancelled on a Thursday. Day, I think. I think so. And they yeah. had to get their cars back from Geneva to Woking over the weekend where commercial lorries aren't allowed to drive. So it was a real challenge to get all of the cars back. What was amazing, we saw an Elva in dark red, which was beautiful. Their sort of speedster, no windscreen. We had a crazy paint job on the McLaren GT, which everyone kind of brushed over. 765 LT, very, very cool. A little bit aftermarket feel to it. Kind of feels like it's a Novitec 720S. Or Mansory 720S. Yeah, like the exhaust tips were very cool, but I looked at them at the first, I was like, oh, I'm not sure my brain quite likes that. But what we can guarantee is that car is going to be an absolute beast on track. A lightweight, long tail 720S, which is already scarily fast. Lightweight, it's going to really feel like a race car. It's it's not going to be anywhere near a centre in terms of its aero and ability on track, but it's still going to be a pretty awesome car. Quite expensive, but in a couple of years... How much is it? I reckon about 
280. Plus options. Plus 765 options. units, though, so limited. <clears throat> yeah, but I think that's a hell of a lot. 762 many. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, so I spent a week with the Track Pack 720S, and at no point did I think this needs less weight or more power. Mm. Um, that Having said that, when we went out and did the 600LT launch, in Hungary, and they put us in a 570S and then a 600LT. Of course, I could see room for improvement with the 570S, but it was night and day. Like, those two cars mm. are, are completely different cars. It's kind of mind-blowing. And so, I'm assuming with the 765LT, because LT is supposed to be the most engaging and, and exciting car in the McLaren range. So, yeah. they're going to have done certain things to make it a little bit more engaging. <sighs> Is it going to be any better? Like, oh, 100 percent, it's going to be better. Sorry, better is the wrong word. Uh, any more? Basically, worth what, it on the road. Yeah, worth it. Like, like on the uh, road. Okay. Is it going to be worth it? I'm going to fight McLaren's corner. No, here. please do. I'm pretty please sure do. you won't. But we've all been in the same conversations where we've all been very close to buying an LT product. Okay, sure. You're saying 570s versus 600 LT, night and day. Of course it is. The 600 LT has something that we can't quite put our finger on on the 570. It's missing something. The soul, the passion. The 600 LT has an element to that. The same with the 650s to the 675 LT. You've been very close to buying one of them. Like, That's they, their best car they make, mate. Yeah, agree. Agree. They, agree. They, yeah, they, yeah. They, the LT products carry yeah. something that their road-going cars don't, which I feel like is the passion that is missing from the McLaren brand that we get from the Ferraris, the Lamborghinis, and the Porsche GT products. So the 720S, do you remember when we drove it in Rome? We were like, yeah. this is the fastest thing ever. I can't believe it's this much money. And actually, we all said at the end, it's still missing something. So I think we need to reserve our judgment until we're behind the wheel of it on track and on road, because I guarantee it's going to have that passion that is lacking from the 720S. Yes, I, I, I'm certain you're right. And yeah, I think even though Tony's burning a hole in the back of my head with a stare. <laughs> I think we can all agree that McLaren LT products are fantastic products, Tony. Not? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to get into resale the, and value, but as a product... As a car. As a car, the LTs are always fantastic. They are. The biggest problem with the... Six, what is it? 765? Seven, six, seven, six, will be the 720S. That That's the biggest problem. Because they're 150K. Because they're half the money. Yeah. Yeah, but, okay, so I think sometimes, mainly because of your job, but also the fundamentals of it, we sometimes get a bit caught up on money. Let's, let's just, let's look for at a second, second, for a second, let's just... 720S, Senna. 765 is going to be closer to a Senna than it is a 720S. Okay, but I think the Senna's a ridiculous car anyway. Yes, yeah, so do I. <laughs> have you driven one? I don't care. It's Drive not as fast as a race car. Drive one. And it's and it's eight hundred pound it's eight hundred grand or whatever it is. But I don't care. It's not it's not as good as a race car. So you can have a <laughs> you could buy a, you could buy a four eight challenge car, run it forever, and still have more money in your pocket oh, and you go faster. Can't. I know someone with a four eight challenge car, he's skin. <laughs> yeah, but it's you, like the most expensive car to run. Okay, but, but, if but you no, bought, you're if, right, Tony. You're right. It's uh, uh, an actual slicks and wings race car is always going to be quicker than a Senna. It's like, a road it is, car. Like, it's slicks it, on a Senna then. No, no it's no. the road car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's a different element. I but mean, you cannot take that to Halfords. But the thing is, oh, I can. <laughs> it's the same problem the Pista has with the 488, and arguably the the image crisis that the Pista has, the, the fact that it's not as desirable as arguably a speciality in the used market because the values are the same, is because I think people wrote off the 488. They were like, oh, 488's a bit boring. It's a crap Ferrari. Pista can't be that good. And also they're too similar. So there isn't always that sort of like, oh, I've got to get that. Um, but money aside, 765LT, I think you're right. 675LT, sorry. No, what, no 7, 765. 7, God, it's confusing. <laughs> um, <laughs> It will will be a fantastic car. Like, yeah. it will. But but I'm not disputing that. The okay. 600 LT is a good car. The 675 LT is a good car. Like, like you know, we, we, mm. I, we, me and you spoke, me and you spoke. I've nearly bought both of them. Mm. I just won't buy another McLaren, yeah. which is a shame. But if you compare the 488 to the Pista, the 488 Pista to the 488, I think, having driven them both at length and owning the 488, the Pista's 20% better as a car. Sure. It's 20% better. And until you go on track, you're not really going to know the difference. And that's going to be the same with a 720 
and the 765. Yeah. Until you actually drive it properly, the 720 is going to be better on the road. It's a road car. Yeah, yeah. It, and, yeah. and it's 150 grand. I know you said take price out, but you you have to, that has to be a factor because it's not 20 grand. On the way in now, we were talking about AMG Pros and AMG GTRs. There's a huge price difference between the two. The Pros, 15, 20% better, mm. but it's not 100 grand better. Yeah. You know, the, the price difference is 50%. So it, it's a thing. It's, you, you have to consider it. Do you think there's something in the fact of if you were to pull up to the lights in a 720S and a 765 LT came next to you, you would go, oh, damn it. Because it's a bit like with the Pistas. You're right. Actually, you know, the 48 is on the road just as, I mean, you're going to get just as much. It's, it's as yeah. quick. How like, fast can you go on the road? Yeah, yeah, put an exhaust on it. I mean, you, you're there. But if I w- walked into a That's dealership. That's that I was saying. Put an exhaust on it and you're there. <laughs> so you're, you're rubbing off on me. I've modified my 911 and now I'm stealing exhaust quotes. Um, and you know, and a Lamborghini as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> there is some truth in that, people. Um, but, you know, you're in a car show or whatever. If a Pista drives in, people go, ooh. If a 48 drives in, people go, ooh. And I think that will be the same situation with the 765 LT. Whilst, you know, maybe it's not enough of a step up. It's just the newer, better version. that's car people that say yeah. that. That's yeah. car people, not car people. They would just go, that's a McLaren. That's, oh, that's when I drove McLaren. a 570S through central London, it was bright orange. I heard someone go, oh, that's that million pound P1. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it's not going to make any difference to people that are walking past. They're going to be like, that's a really cool looking car. What is it? Read it. McLaren. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a million yeah. quid. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, you're fair. You're right. Okay, well, let's let's wait and see. I think Paul will probably be going on the drive of that at some point, maybe. I definitely uh, won't be. No. <laughs> I'm not sure I will I be either, unfortunately. I, but, cannot, uh, like, yeah. I hope I'm invited. Who It'll knows? Wicked. Well, you can come back on the show afterwards and tell us how it is. Um, <laughs> or so, you can tune into my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> no free promotions on this yeah, podcast. No. <laughs> yeah, we get more people watch this than your channel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> So before we let Tony really run away with the rest of this podcast, I'm going to get a couple of cars in first. Um, one that I don't think either of you care about, but I'm excited about is the new Morgan Plus 4. Uh, I had my experience with the Morgan uh, a couple of years ago now. They let me one for the weekend. And I really, really enjoyed it, actually. And I even drove a... Oh, what was the one called with the fuggly eyes? I get confused. We've all got fuggly eyes. eyes. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, they've, they've updated this. This now has the Z4 engine in it. Not the... Well, it has they had the super engine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's, cool. it's slightly updated uh, um, body work and stuff like that but the Still biggest thing the is there's more space more space in the cabin and that was always the thing that was, was a bit tight but I'm actually genuinely intrigued by that car I think it's cool different prospect they're still expensive though 70 grand something like that they start at mm, yeah, so, so it's a lot I saw money, them but... photograph that car in the south of Spain uh, so I got yeah. a bit of a sneak peek and then like someone went up with their phone and they're like no no no, no, no. it's a brand new car I was like oh it looks exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah it's hard yeah, as yeah. a non-geek it's hard to tell the differences but I think it looks nice I think it's cool and it's a sort of like it's a very David Gandhi-esque car you know what I mean like, okay. like you kind of I feel like it's a suave turn up to Henley Regatta you know it's just yeah. it's kind of cool it's kind of different it's a posh man's catering mate it, th- literally yeah. that literally yeah. that so it's a, it's more of a cruiser than a yeah. all out racer but I, I like the look of it do you remember Cruel Intentions no, you don't remember the movie Cruel? Oh, I my. haven't seen a. I haven't seen a movie. I oh mean, I do God. not watch telly. Okay, no, this is a long time. <laughs> and ago. I watch the football. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we're big Tottenham fans, aren't we, Tony? Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't shout about that at the moment. <laughs> Somebody picked up on some fake banter that I was giving Tony the other day about like David Ginola or something like that, and they thought and then, he was an actual fan. And really kindly, actually, I should shout him out because he was very kindly invited me to a Tottenham game, and I, I forgot to get back to him because oh, I'm actually not. Put a Tottenham him in touch fan. with me. I'll yeah. go. Sorry. Yeah, I'll Sorry definitely go. Whoever it was that was offering me that, I, I apologise I didn't get back to you. It slipped my mind. But thank you for the kind offer. I'm not actually a fan of football <laughs> no, or Tottenham. Although he looks like a <laughs> yeah. <fan>. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, Cruel Intentions, amazing for you to go and watch it. There's a lesbian kissing scene, which is a win. Um, and anyway... <laughs> the podcast just took a downhill turn <laughs> very quickly. At the end, hold on a sec. Woo! <laughs> At least you got the right button. Um, <laughs> at the end, uh, the main character has like, a, I think it's an old Jaguar C-Type or something like that, or at least an old XK120. Anyway, he's cruising around this old car. Very cool. And that's what I think the Morgan Plus 4 is about. Um, Golf GTI. I mean, actually, I was going to sort of say we're not going to talk about that long, but I'm worried that Tony might talk about it. No, 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 no. I just think that it's for the people. Mate. It's great, isn't it? 242 yeah, yeah. horsepower, 0 to 60 under six seconds. Looks pretty good. I like the way the new, it's Mark 8, right? Correct. Fan of this? You're yeah. into your hot hatches at the moment. You turned yeah, yeah. up in a 
Focus ST, right? Focus ST. So, <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> what, what are you trying to say? What are you saying, Tony? <laughs> you know, you, Tony, you're going to lose a lot of the audience in a second. <laughs> I think it looks good, that Focus ST. <clears throat> I think a lot of the newer golfs kind of all blend into one. But this looks different, that I can tell that it's the Mark 8. The one thing that interested me, because I actually saw the launch of this, is that they put the worst wheels on the yeah. GTI. Yeah. And, and the then, R. Yeah, and then on the, GTD, the yet, have they? on the GTD, on the GTD, GTD and GTE, they put nice wheels on them. Mm. And I was like, as long as I can spec nice wheels on the GTI, I'd you go can. for it. And I'd actually say, I've said this before on Twitter, that if I somehow came into a hell of a lot of money, I'd probably go and buy like a Polo GTI as my little city run around. Because I, I think love, they're wicked. Oh, no, up. I'd have an up. Up GTI. Up GTI. Polo oh, I'd, have, GTI. I'd have Polo. Polo's cool. The seats. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, seats yeah, yeah, are yeah, mega. No yeah. one buys Polo GTIs. No. It's so yeah, weird. See them Good investment the then, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> limited numbers. Yeah, really. I'll be coming to you in a couple of years. Scratch, they're only built. scratch number zero two out of eight. <laughs> we had this conversation the other day where Tony was saying that limited's not always good. No, <laughs> I don't I listen to that podcast. Oh, yeah. good man. Yeah, Thanks yeah. for tuning in. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, Golf GTI win. Let's uh, let's see when they hit the road. I think that'll be exciting. Um, uh, and finally, before we move on to the big hitter of Tony's life, uh, Aston Martin V12 Speedster. So this is the fourth car in the sort of vein of uh roofless windscreenless hypercar yeah. following on from the ferrari monza Elva. mclaren elva um what else am i thinking of uh come on not a clue oh, is there another well, is there yeah, another, there's another one oh it's really annoyed me anyway Aston Martin V12 Speedster. Um, someone remind me what the other one is that I've totally forgotten. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, what's it based on? Does anyone know what it's based on? I asked this question. I asked this question because what I'm so interested about is I've been hearing rumours from within Aston Martin that they couldn't fit the V12 engine onto the Vantage chassis. It was about a foot too long. Right. What engine they got in it? It's got the five point yeah, it's got the five point two litre V twelve that you'd find like a DBS. But I really wanted them to make a V twelve Vantage, because that obviously is an iconic car pre AMG, but they were telling me that it just doesn't fit. Mm. So I've heard mixed things that it's a totally new chassis, and I've heard that they've basically merged DBS and Vantage chassis together. I'm hearing different things, sure. but they seem to be the most logical given that the engine doesn't actually fit in a normal Vantage chassis. Probably an S-Class. <laughs> I mean, brutal. <laughs> Did you see or the news as well? Lee. They literally <laughs> said the news today that they're going to be getting rid of those Merc V8s and they're doing oh, yeah, in, yeah, in-house yeah. hybrid V6s. Really? Yeah. They're all going that I way. Did, I did a shoot um, uh, back in Monaco two years ago and they were saying that the new C63 is this... Um, is this Hybrid. Yeah. Oh, no, but, but, uh, so, but they're saying it wasn't going to be a Merc engine. Aston was saying oh, really? it's going to be their own engine. Oh, are you, oh okay. Maybe, but maybe, hey, this was like a really weird tweet that I saw about three hours ago and thought I'd just lump into the podcast. So <laughs> not, do without not, telling yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, do not <laughs> yeah. hold me accountable. Just like completely blindside us. Yeah. Um, okay, well, Paul and I, we can probably go for a drink now and come back in about 15 minutes because <laughs> Tony is going to talk to you all about the Porsche 911 Turbo. S. S. No. What? Go is on, there man. is what? there a turbo as well? Yeah. The, Do you know what? I'm actually kind of on Tony's side, so oh, you can take yourself oh, to a drink. Oh, right, go on. I'm going to send some messages. You guys check. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, mate. What do you... Look, go he's on, like one on. of these um, Porsche fans where he likes all of the slim body, narrow body. Yeah, he's so weird. Yeah. So so he doesn't like the, the, the idea of a turbo mm. S... Yet he's just made his car a million horsepower. <laughs> I mean, just go and buy a Turbo S, you weirdo. Like, I, th I think the new 992 is the best looking oh. 911 for a long time. I love how chunky it is. I love how much oh. road presence it has. From the front, you can tell it's a 992. All of the other, <laughs> all of the other ones. Stop. You're like, oh. Oh, it's a 911. I don't know which one it is. I'm lost with all of the other ones. But this is iconic. I love that sort of like light bar at the back yeah and now we'll with the turbo now s the i think the turbo s is a great looking car i was kind of hoping them to do the gt3 but obviously they do turbo before yeah they always do turbo before yeah. gt3 will be next year but mate if as an everyday all-rounder 
supercar sports car. You'd buy an R8? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't see that coming. Right, so you've got. Uh, I thought you were going to say there Gallardo. There, there, <laughs> yeah, manual though. <laughs> there isn't anything better, is there? The only thing There's that no I found car. with driving Turbo S's is the sense of speed is lost. They're so fast, but you'll look down at the speedo thinking you're doing 70 and you're doing 160. They are really dull. Yeah, they really are really dull. They are really dull, but all modern cars are dull now. Okay, well, so this is my little pet peeve here. Tony, as a, as a Porsche aficionado... I mean, I thought you was. And you've got, uh, you've enthusiast. You've I'm all... an enthusiast. I'd call you an aficionado, considering you've bought every single Porsche over the last two years. Uh, Ten. Uh, it's brought about 12. Um, 25 Porsches I bought in the last there four you go. years. Point proven. So, 25? Uh, I feel, feel like you've counted for some reason recently, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, someone's been having an argument. Uh, <laughs> do you not feel like this is the least 911, 911 Turbo S ever? <laughs> What, what do you mean the least? I mean, I don't... It's huge. Okay. It has nearly 700 horsepower. A Good. car company that has always prided themselves on less power, less weight, i.e. power to weight ratio. Okay. It's... Apart from a Turbo S, because they've always had loads of power. And but GT2 they haven't RS. had 700 horsepower. What about mate? 918? No, no. Chill I mean, out. I mean, chill out. Hey, <laughs> no. Well done. Yeah, yes, I mean, yeah. absolutely. You put a bloody no, no, race no. engine no, no, no. V10 into a Crow GT. No, yeah. Hold on a second. <laughs> hold on a second. <laughs> He's losing control. Entertainment. <laughs> There's uh, the 992 frustrates me as a 991 owner because I just think it's too GT car. It's too big. It's too fluffy. It's too soft. It's too made. It's too made for the 65 year old man and woman that 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 want to wander into Porsche May friends. Say, oh, I'll take one of those. And the turbo, whilst it's never really been a car for me in the Porsche range, I just it's just. Going into this thing of 992 just not being for me. No, mate, all new cars are big. The new Mark 8 Golf GTI is huge. What's your daily driver? Mini? Clubman. Mini, mini Clubman? Clubman. It's the same size as the Which is a... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like even, a Mini's not a Mini anymore. No, it's, it's huge. It's not, I know, I They know, are all big. And I'm, this is a pet peeve. There's nothing wrong with the car. It'll be great, as you say. It'll it's be getting, fantastic. It's getting but... non-Porsche fans into Porsche. I yeah, like but, them now. But that's Do you know another, what I've actually, that's another reason why I don't like it. <laughs> Do you know what I've actually said to someone? I said, if I had a lot of money and didn't do YouTube for a job, I would go and buy a 992 and daily drive it and be like the happiest man in the world. No, you wouldn't. After two months, you'd be bored as hell. Yeah, no, but it's they a daily are, driver. You're yeah, not supposed yeah, to get yeah, enjoyment Yeah, a Bentley Continental. A, yeah, that's that's actually the car. That has a, the sound system in that's way better. Oh, which, yeah. is made, which is made by the same people, basically. This nigga got caught up in the details. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, they, I mean, I'd, I'd have the Porsche because it's, it's, it's a sports car. The Bentley GT is not a sports it's car. It's a wafter. So, okay. I, I'm i assuming at some point a 911, 992 Turbo will come through your doors, whether it's personally or, or as a business. One, yeah. yeah, so I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I would assume that. I have a lot of money, though. I reckon now... 150. Plus plus, really one, one yeah. seven five one oh, eighty no, with options. Yeah, yeah. So Bentley point. Continental. Um, yeah. So I reckon you won't hold on to it, whether it's a business car or a personal car, longer than a month. Can we just put that? I'm going to lay that down now. Well, no. Wait a minute. No. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. No, 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 no. If they turned money, I won't hold on to it for a week. <laughs> But, but historically they've held well yeah. though, haven't they turbos? they do yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 they do I just think you'll I think you'll be bored yeah but I've got a GT car <laughs> I've got a GT car no <laughs> exactly I'll be fine he's okay. in and out of cars all the so time so you're going to take yeah. that bet with me uh, no boy no do you know what he's well. not going to take the no, bet no I'll take the take bet, the bet. Yeah. Because, oh, okay. I'll, because I'll because I'll win because on purpose I'll <laughs> <laughs> You'll purposely lose money yeah. just so that you win the bet. How much will we bet? Oh. Probably about a ten or yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> The next coffee we'll for our Sunday morning coffee. coffee. <laughs> it was Starbucks. Oh god. Okay. Well, look. I'm sure there are plenty of cars that we we've missed out on that we haven't talked about. Um, uh, Audi A3s. I would for example. like to quickly brief. Oh no, I know where you're going with this. The, I'd like to say something as well after him. There <sighs> are two cars that we are yet to see that have been teased on social media. I think they get a lot of attention at the Geneva Motor Show. Mansory. Oh, my They God. always come I told you I with wild, crazy cars. And I love going to their stand because half of it's laughable, but half of it is quite cool. You want a Mansory DB11? I do. 
<laughs> I actually do. I think it'd be sick. They, Mate, you should have let me go first. We could have just switched him off. They are they are <laughs> launching. Yeah, yeah. We actually have switched him off. Switched him off. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. Mansory are releasing a four GT and an Aventador SVJ, and I'm so excited about it. An Aventador SVJ. I, I think the more impressive one is the four GT. Because <laughs> what the heck are they going to do to that? I can't I mean, wait. Aventador is an Aventador. The SVJ is just the same thing with a stupid wing at the back. But you know, fundamentally, four GT. I don't think anyone's modified one of them yet. Have they? <laughs> no, apart from Hennessy. So. Yeah. Um, uh, just because that conversation was really boring Tony what was your point <laughs> uh, I drove new RS6 oh, oh yes we did actually tease this we did tease this, this big and week. boring give us your thoughts what he just said <laughs> big, big, big and boring it's just a new I mean listen I'm so over cars now I can like, tell it's good that's your job <laughs> yeah like that, that. that's it like the so I only drove it like 50 60 miles obviously it's a brand new car so I didn't lever it it wasn't it was a customer's car so you just uh, cruised in it basically just, just cruised in it and um yeah just too, too usable too comfy too easy to drive four wheel steering is good though yeah like when yeah, you go, yeah i can yeah. imagine that would actually help yeah that's that, the thing is it's the size of a lorry yeah <laughs> it's a big old thing yeah it looks good though Really oh, good. I looks think good. I think the old one still looks better. Ugh. No, oh, I no do. Way. I mean, you're getting Paul, caught you're, up on the interior. You're very quickly losing no, your spot on this podcast. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you, but I think you've overstayed your welcome. It's been a pleasure having um, you get out. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you all have enjoyed this week's episode. Our, our sort of brief recap on the non-Geneva Motor Show. I'm sure there's plenty more to come uh, over the few weeks ahead, and also the year ahead. Uh, lots more cars still to come uh, our way. Paul will be back on the podcast coming months uh, Formula 1 episodes you oh, tend to like to appear yes. on um, or the cap especially for that promo oh yeah he's big on that Lewis Hamilton vibe uh, Tony unfortunately is here every week <laughs> uh, but give us a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it YouTubers please make sure to turn on those notifications and subscribe actually in the f- first place and review uh, and review if you're <laughs> listening to us make sure to follow and review we will catch up with you very very soon adios peace out <laughs>